Thanks so much, Ken. Good afternoon, everybody. It's an absolute honor uh, for us to be here. I'd like to thank city staff for such a well-run organization, uh, competition, the councillors and the mayor, and especially members of the public. Thank you for showing interest in this important city project. I'm joined by three of my colleagues today, Nolan Natale, senior architect and design manager, and Sandra Cook, land landscape designer at Fork Limited, as well as Andrew Davies, our art consultant on the project. Hamilton is a waterfront city proud of its industry, heritage, and unique character, the hammer. Back in May, I attended the City Age Hamilton conference at the Cotton Factory. It was a great conference, and I heard a number of comments that really struck, uh, stuck with me. Hamilton is not an industrial, or a post -industri not a post-industrial city, it's an industrial city. 30,000 people are still employed by industry here. And Hamilton's renaissance is being brought about by many modest, individual, impactful projects that work. And I heard, we are proud of our story. The city has a unique and proud story, its heritage, its waterfront city, or its waterfront setting, and as a real city with true urban form. Our design for Pier 8 is a celebration of Hamilton's industrial and marine heritage. We call our design One Site, Three Places. One Site, Three Places. Hammer Harbor, the landing, and the Boatworks Promenade. Let me orient you. This is the Haida here, Sarkoa Restaurant down here, and the lakefront, and the inner turning basin. One site, three places. Hammer Harbor, the landing, and the Boatworks Promenade. Hammer Harbor, where Hamilton comes to gather and celebrate as a city with its unique setting fronting the basin, the Haida, and the industrial Hamilton. The Boatworks Promenade, an outward-looking lakefront, multi-use boardwalk with fun experiences for all ages facing the Hamilton Harbor and the natural views of the escarpment and the landing, a special place on the northeastern corner of Pier 8 that connects the Boatworks Promenade and Hammer Harbor together. One site, three places. Let me describe those in a bit more detail. The Boatworks Promenade. So once again, we're looking south here. This is the Haida Sarkoa restaurant and the new development of Pier 7 and Pier 8. Along the north edge of Pier 8, are the steel hulls of three ships. These hulls carve out and create three unique spaces along the pier. Steel Beach, the playground, and the Pump House Cafe and Games Terrace. These beautiful forms of these ships reflect the sunlight, describe the scale of beautiful boats and their poetic beauty. The hulls also tell authentic stories of Hamilton. For instance, in 1900, the steamship tramp Carlo was the first ocean steamer seen in Hamilton. Now you can walk its length to get a sense of its scale and its form. As you approach the hulls, public heart is revealed as etchings appear on their surface, celebrating the heritage of Pier 8 and the North End. For instance, the Garth Shore Iron Works, an important industry in the North End, was the first company in Ontario to cast iron for water, gas, and sewer pipes. Run your hand along its surface as the etched surfaces are revealed and tell the stories of the North End's history and the people. Steel Beach. Grab a lounge chair, put your feet up, and watch the world go by. A protected white sand beach provides a great place for the kids to play or throw a frisbee around. And it provides an incredible view across Hamilton Harbor and the Niagara Escarpment. We have seating options in sun and shade. And this is a great place to see and be seen. The playground. The theme of the playground is that of a working pier. Imagine a ship has just landed. It's unloaded its goods of netting, crates, 
of raw materials for Hamilton's industry. This is what children play on, play around, play in. And they have fun, and they get some exercise, but they also learn and appreciate Hamilton's marine heritage. Adjacent to the playground is a lovely shaded area of native Kentucky coffee trees for parents and caregivers to watch their children. And on the opposite side is a netted ball court where you can shoot some hoops, test out your ground strokes, or even shoot some pucks at the back wall. The third area is the cafe and games terrace. So the city of Hamilton has a new pump house planned for and designed for this section. We've integrated it into the boat form. It's right here and where it becomes the superstructure of a freighter. Imagine you're on the deck of this ship, a cafe seating area with movable tables and chairs under a grove of Carolinian sycamore trees, perfect for a game of chess or cards, and providing elevated views of the harbor and the promenade. We've got ping pong tables and bocce courts. There could be a space for a potential cafe or snack bar. And at the west end, you can pick up a book from the sharing library and enjoy it on the elevated terrace. The boat forms are a big idea with a unique visual character but they also provide a number of important functions. Ken mentioned the grade change between the existing community and the dock wall. Of, it's actually close to three meters in some locations. These will help us achieve that grade change. They protect the playground and the games terrace from the lake winds, and they provide a shaded area on the beach. The hulls are strategically located to support the three mid uh, mid-rise buildings in the new development of Pier 7 and 8. And they support a generous and deep canopy for large native Carolinian trees to grow in and become large and flourish. They have a stormwater management function, allowing water to slowly fill up and be cleaned before it enters the lake. And they create unique conditions for varied programs and activities. Once again, the steel beach, the playground, and the cafe and games terrace. At the terminus of Houston and John Street, two north-south streets end up at viewing plazas overlooking the lake. Here we have demonstration remediation wetlands and integrated public art. These tell the story about a dialogue, create a dialogue between water quality issues in Hamilton Harbor and it's a place where you could hear some frogs, see some migratory birds, touch some cattails. Along the dock wall is a six meter or 20 foot wide promenade that connects to the existing waterfront trail, bringing it right into our site. Here, the concrete that exists already in front of the Sarcoa restaurant slowly transitions to a beautiful boardwalk, reminiscent of the wooden pier that was at Pier 8. The path also allows cyclists to bypass the boardwalk and head up through the streets as well. So if you want to move at a faster pace, but we see this as a slower paced area right in front. And the wooden promenades widen to form two beautiful plazas here. An amazing place to, for instance, watch the tall ship's dock. Here you'll have benches and secure bicycle parking and gently sloping lawns provide seating overlooking the boardwalk plazas and the lake, a great place to people watch. A continuous sidewalk shaded with honey locusts and hackberries here provides an upper connection to the new community. The landing. The landing occupies a special prominence on Pier 8, linking Hammer Harbor here and the Boatworks Promenade. This special place is a location to experience the contrast between the natural and industrial skylines of Hamilton Harbor. The landing is an assembly of the elemental materials we've used throughout the site, steel, water, and stone. The landing is a place for ritual, 
It is the only place on the site where we've actually excavated it to allow water from the lake to enter into the site and revealing the historical structure of the piers and wood piling below and the changing levels of the lake. The sound of the lake echoes within the steel prow and it's a place to practice, to remember, to celebrate and discuss. Here you might come across a bride and groom exchanging vows, a ceremony in memory of a loved one, or even a student practicing her saxophone. The landing is a place to experience the summer and winter solstice as a special shadow form is revealed at this time on the prow. And the landing is a place for Hamiltonians to define. Hammer Harbor. Hammer Harbor faces this incredible inner basin. It has a very different feeling and character from the board the Boatworks Promenade, which faces directly onto the lake. It's more sheltered and enclosed and has incredible view of Hamilton industry beyond and Lake Ontario. So while the Boatworks Promenade here is about movement and activities, the landing, a place of reflection and ritual, Hamilton Harbor is where Hamilton comes together to celebrate together as a city. At Hammer Harbor, there were things to do and see year-round. Imagine a winter festival with artisans, tasty treats, and fun things for the kids to do. How about a Friday night movie where the screen is projected onto a large screen that comes down from the structure around it? Or a concert on a summer's eve with a band on a floating barge with the incredible backdrop of the basin, the Haida, and the North Shore Industries? or super crawl. To support these kinds of events, we have designed a pavilion in the form of an industrial gantry crane using repurposed steel members and standard fabrication methodologies. This is the form of the structure that is within, currently within our budget. But the form of the structure has incredible opportunities for sponsorship with the private sector to be expanded in either direction. This simple structure provides an authentic and iconic symbol for Pure 8. However, although iconic and reflective, it is also a structure meant to be functional and in order to support the events and programming that will occur here. Temporary fabrics can be draped over it, providing a shaded and rain-protected place to sit and watch a concert. We've included this in our budget and create a tent-like place for displays and special events Lighting and rigging can be attached to it. And large objects and sets can be lifted in and out of place from this structure. Acrobats can use it to suspend and perform from. And the pavilion creates a frame for a waterfront stage with a dramatic industrial skyline behind it. Market stalls, tents can be inserted into its structure and it can transform into a gallery to suspend art installations during the Supercrawl Art Show. Adjacent to the new community, right here, a tree-lined cobblestone street provides a spill-out for the future shops, restaurants, and cafes that will be built into the first level. And the steps gently down to lake level. There's an opportunity for a future outdoor curling rink right here that integrates with the proposed pedestrian and green street within the new community. And it would be a lovely water feature in the summer. Hammer Harbor doesn't just serve the local community, but the city as a whole. The redevelopment of Pier 8 and our design, one site, three places, will be one of those individual, impactful projects that truly makes a difference to the city of Hamilton. Pure 8 shouldn't look like the everyday, but be authentically Hamilton, creating an experience worth remembering and a project that works, period. Built tough, like the hammer. Thank you. I'd like to uh, recognize my team members who are here with us today, and I'd like to ask them to come up on stage and join me for the question period. Nolan Tally, Senior Architect and Design Manager at Forex Limited. Andrew Davies, art consultant, and Sandra Cook, landscape designer. Happy to answer your questions.
Any questions from the jurors? <sighs> James. Um, thanks very much for your, your presentation, Scott. Um, you touched briefly upon uh, the level changes, and I'm just wondering if you could just elaborate on how you're making the level changes between the hulls and also on the, uh, on the um, uh, Hammer Harbor side, how you're making up that level change. Absolutely. Thanks, James, for that question. So I'll start with Hammer Harbor, which is right here. So this level here, we have a gently sloping set of uh, stepped seating, so it's almost an amphitheater that looks down in the stage area, but a series of gentle sloped walkways that allow you to, say, push a stroller down as well. Um, and let me just go over here. So in, in the Boatworks Promenade, you can see here we have these gentle sloped walkways here, here, and here. If you don't want to use a sloped grass area or you, you're coming in at grade. So it really, that's how it connects in, in both locations. Great, thank you, Scott, for your presentation. Uh, my question has to do maybe for Andrew. Um, the sculptural elements you've included, is that specifically by um, a, a specific artist, or would that be something that would be um, part of a competition with the project? Uh, the sculptural element on the landing, is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Yes. No, that's in some ways a placeholder. I actually see that as uh, a prominent space for a curated installation. And I would actually recommend that a, a local curatorial committee be uh, put together to oversee what would go into that location. Currently, um, there's no budget for the artwork in that particular location. There is uh, for the engravings and for the water wetland feature. Uh, but I really see that as where we talked about, you know, the connection with the water. The water is actually coming underneath but there is that framework that is actually kind of the, uh, relates to the, the heritage of how these docks were created. So there's an underwater uh, foundation that you could mount different works to. So it's really much uh, set up for that kind of application. And just, just to clarify um, Andrew's point here, um, we're showing a bit of a placeholder piece of art here, but in terms of the landing itself, what's in the budget, though, is, is the prow and, and everything you see here. It's really just this kind of sculptural piece that we're showing as a placeholder. So be, be clear for me, Scott, the arced piece of Corten steel is or is not in? Is, yes. Is in. So yes. it's the art piece yeah. in front of that. In the excavation. Okay. I'm just, that little, uh, just that little... So we get the bit of ship still there. Okay. Thank you. Again, I just have a question around the budget. Um, I think uh, your budget for the first phase is six and a half million. So based on what we've seen, you talked a lot about this could be future, this could be sponsored, this could be whatever. What would you estimate the cost of those future works to be? Just order of magnitude so we kind of understand what we're, what we're seeing. Let me, um, let me just clarify what's in, because first of all, for the 6.5 million, Linda, th and thank you for that question. So as I said, this uh, future water feature, we really see that as part of the development of uh, the future block. Um, this floating barge um, would be a great addition to the stage, but we have a wonderful stage right underneath the gantry here. And so this whole gantry is within, within the budget. The central part of it, yes. So that's what you see right here. The feature that could be future, um, in addition, I think this is about a million dollars to add these pieces here. And the only is the only other thing that isn't included, as as uh, Andrew mentioned, is is the art commission um, at the landing. Thank you. Great presentation. Uh, my question is about the, the promenade where you're changing from uh, uh, a stone surface to a wood surface and you had commented that you would like to take the cycle traffic then would go up onto, I guess, the street and then back down once uh, they've passed the, the wood area. Now, is the intent that 
the traffic that moves along that wooden promenade, is that meant as there's no high-speed traffic there, in other words, cyclists or the waterfront trolley or any of those other things that you're trying to move that traffic up and then make it very slow-paced at the waterfront? I just wanted to know what your thinking on that was. Absolutely. You know, it's a relatively quick walk to get from here to here, but we really wanted to slow people down a little bit, but it is a multi-use trail. So we've provided space all along here for all users to, to go. But if you're part of doing the, the whole waterfront trail and maybe this is just a stop on your way, we also wanted to provide an alternate route. I'll show it to you here. Um, so I have an extreme angle here, right up through here. So, you can, so that would allow a secondary route that goes through the community to access it. But we want people to stay and enjoy this space. Um, there's so many things going on and so many things to do that uh, we really see it as being a very busy sp spot. So, <clears throat> just so I understand very clearly that, so th where does the trolley go? Is it staying on the trail on the waterfront or is it doing the bypass? It could do both. It could, it would probably be easier for it to go in the, here, but it could certainly continue right along. Once again, we've got 20 feet or six meters. So it's a true multi-use trail. Yeah. And just a question about paving. Um, was there any thought or thinking about uh, permeable paving at all and dealing with the, the runoff issues with permeable paving? Just, I just wondered if that was, you know, any thought given to that. Absolutely. This is a cobblestone lined street. And we're going to use the tree pits here to drain into. We're going to use all low impact development techniques. So this, all this soil, which is mitigating that two to three meter grade change, also besides supporting these trees, is, has a stormwater management function. And certainly the, um, the boardwalk is permeable. And we've actually shown a detail here um, <coughs> how it actually works. So we have this crushed stone layer uh, repurposed um, uh, rail tracks here, and then it drains right through here. And we're proposing that the, um, when the, <coughs> the dock wall is, is completed by the city of Hamilton, that there's a very simple methodology that's been used throughout the world of incorporating steel, uh, perforated steel and stone-filled cribs to provide fish habitat along this entire length. I was talking to a couple of fishermen, and I realized there's a a major fish derby here, but I think they would really appreciate that. And it's a very popular spot, but an amazing thing for the lake and its habitat as well. Yeah, that would be something for you guys to do when you install the, uh, the, <laughs> the shore wall. And uh, I think it would be a great thing and a simple uh, addition to it. Hello, thanks. Can you all hear me okay? My questions and concerns are related to disability and accessibility. Um, I'm wounded, so it's important to me, but also I've been working with and volunteering with kids with disabilities since I was a teenager. So I don't see, unless it's in the report someplace, that these designs are following the universal slash barrier-free designs of the um, Rick Hansen access for all sorts of architect, you know, I, you, I know he goes, he works a lot with Brad McCannell, so no offense, but these are the sorts of things that are important to me when you say that the path and the project will be open to all, that it truly will, because where are the darts buses going to go, where are people who have mobility issues going to be included, you know, there's an awful lot of people that have mobility devices and those sorts of things, so that's my concern, is how is everybody truly going to be included in this. Thank you. Okay. I should point out that one of the requirements was that everything be uh, AODA compliant. But Scott, if you wanted to address any of the mobility, specific mobility issues you have uh, in your design. Yeah, let, um, you, you want to say something, Nolan? So, but I'll just add, and thank you for your point. It's a, it's a great point and something we take very seriously as in all of our work, it's always has to be completely compliant uh, with AOD, and it's something we spend a lot of time at looking at this 
uh, three-dimensionally to make sure we were because there is quite a, a gray change to deal with and we really, it's critical. You know, I pushed a stroller around with uh, twins for a number of years and I know how important uh, these things are. And I also know even a, a 5% sloped walkway is, um, you know, is, is a challenge. And so we've really worked hard to make sure we have adequate access throughout the site, but as well as using materials to provide visual cues for changes in grade or changes in surface and things like that. And Nolan, did you want to add anything? I'll probably just add to that. I mean, accessibility throughout the site has been a priority all through our design. And um, not just uh, in the slopes. There are, there are difficult issues that we're dealing with that pertain to the elevations here. And aside from providing uh, essentially uh, accessibility through slopes and ramps of less than 5%. We're concerned, like Scott is referring to, to all of the other aspects of disabilities that, that uh, may be, uh, that we could improve upon. Any, any kind of sensual thing like uh, sounds uh, are something that, you know, we're very uh, conscious of. Sounds, textures, materials things that will add to, you, to one's abilities to find their way around, get comfortable, recognize orientation, and basically navigate throughout the site unencumbered and on their own, independent. It's been a priority for us. Very good. Okay, I think our half hour is up. If you have any more concerns, please uh, contact me or, or fill out our form so we get those on the considered. Thank you. Um, Thanks very much. Thank you.